hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name's Sarah and my channel is Your True Shelf. And today I'm gonna to be doing my first haul of the year. It's quite funny because I did a haul in December which I said was gonna be my last haul of the year and then I got a massive deluge of books in December. But um, I thought I'd look a bit silly if I then did another December haul. So I've saved them all up till January. I'll see how the time goes because um, I might have to do them in two parts because there's quite a lot of books. So I will crack right on. The first four books that I had, I was lucky enough to win. So um, Lauren, whose channel I will link below, did a competition to win a set of the um, Costa list of books. And I was lucky enough to win the list of novels that has been nominated for the first novel award. So they all arrived, which is very exciting because they are four brand new books. So the first of these is The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle by Stuart Turton. Um, so I don't know what any of these are about, to be honest. I've heard them being talked about, but I can't actually remember, so I'm just going to go through the blurbs. So this one says, At a party thrown by her parents, Evelyn Hardcastle will be killed again. She's been murdered hundreds of times, and each day Aidan Bishop is too late to save her. The only way to break this cycle is to identify Evelyn's killer. But every time the day begins again, Aidan wakes in the body of a different guest and someone is desperate to stop him ever escaping Blackheath. So that sounds like a little bit of magical realism and crime and thriller and um, very exciting. The second one that's nominated is um, this one, which is Pieces of Me by Natalie Hart. This one, I think, is about um, PTSD, secondary to being in the forces. So um, it says, Emma did not go to war looking for love, but Adam is unlike any other. Until the secret shadow of trauma, Emma decides to leave Iraq and Adam joins to settle in Colorado. But isolation and fear find her once again when Adam is redeployed. Torn between a deep fear of Adam's safety and a desire to be back there herself, Emma copes by throwing herself into a new role, mentoring an Iraqi refugee family. But when Adam comes home, he brings the conflict back with him. Emma had considered the possibility that her husband might not come home from war. She had not considered that he might return a stranger. This isn't the kind of thing that I would normally read. I don't really like reading about modern day war. Um, but uh, obviously it must be good if it's been listed for their prize. So I'm gonna definitely give it a try. And I think sometimes when you try something new, um, it's it's good because it makes you go out of, read out of your comfort zone, which can be really um really you know a good way of changing your old habits. The third one that is on the list is an unremarkable body by Elisa Lodato. This one says um, an unremarkable body does not mean an unremarkable life. When Catherine is found dead at the foot of her stairs, it's the mystery that of her life that consumes her daughter Laura. The medical examiner's report, in which precious parts of Catherine's body are weighed and categorised, motivates Laura to write down her own version of events. But as she delves deeper into Catherine's past, she is forced to confront a new version of a woman that she only knew as her mother. A woman silenced by her own mother and wronged by her husband. A woman who lived in the shadows but whose secrets are now coming to light. That sounds really interesting because I think um, as a mother or even with our own mothers, we can forget that they're anyone else apart from our mum and that they are their own person with their own life and their own story. Um, this sounds uh, like the daughter is uncovering that and um, that sounds like a, a really interesting um, a really interesting book. And then the last one, which I got from this competition, this one I love the sound of, is called um, Meet Me at the Museum by Anne Youngson. I really like the cover of this one as well. Um, this one says, I think the, um, yeah, the blurb is on the inside of this one, so I can't hold it up. Sometimes it takes a stranger to know who you really are. When Tina Hopgood writes a letter of regret to a man she has never met, she does not expect a reply. When Anders Larsen, a lonely museum creator, answers it, neither does he. They're both searching for something, they just don't know it yet. Anders has lost his wife, along with his hopes and dreams for the future. Tina is trapped in a life she doesn't remember choosing. Slowly their correspondence blossoms as they bear their souls to each other with stories of joy, anguish and discovery. But then Tina's letters suddenly cease and Anders is thrown into to despair. Can their unexpected friendship survive? Um, just looking inside, I 
think this is an epistolary novel. I think the whole thing is written in letters. And I can see that some of the letters come from Bury St Edmunds, which is quite near where I grew up. So, um, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this one. So there were the four that I got from the prize. Um, the next ones I found in a um, second-hand bookshop. We went to Blickling Hall, which is a National Trust stately home in Norfolk. And we went there at Christmas. It's absolutely stunning. And they've had a massive second-hand bookshop, really big. And I didn't have that much time to browse because I had the children with me and they were getting a bit fed up after they'd done lots of walking around Blickling. And so um, I'd really like to go back there just simply to have a really good look in the bookshop. But what I did come away with, three quite old books. Um, so two of them are by Daphne du Maurier. Um, a lot of the channels that I watch really love Daphne du Maurier. Um, I listened to Rebecca on tape, which shows how long ago that was, many, many years ago. I reckon I was in my very early teens. And I remember really enjoying it, but I haven't had any contact with it since then. And I read My Cousin Rachel when I was on holiday about 10 years ago. Um, so I picked up two more of her backlist, one of which, look at these covers, they're awful, aren't they? One of which is Frenchman's Creek. And um, so it says, impassioned romance and spirited adventure blend magnificently in one of Daphne du Maurier's most popular novels. While the gentry of Cornwall strive to capture the daring Frenchman who plunders their shores... The beautiful Lady Donna finds excitement, danger and a passion she never knew before as she dares to love a pirate, a devil-may-care adventurer who risks his life for a kiss. That makes it sound really rubbish on the back, but I know it's got a good reputation. And on the back, see how old this is? 70p. Can you believe books used to be 70p? Um, the second Daphne du Maurier that I got with an equally hideous cover, um, also 70p, is um jamaica inn so um this is about this is also set in cornwall um young mary yellen found her uncle the apparent leader of a strange of strange men who plied a secret trade was there more to learn she remembered the fear in her aunt's eyes on the wild rough moors there were only two people to befriend her a mysterious person and an instant likable rogue who broke the law every day of his life so the back of both of them doesn't sound brilliant, but I know they've got a really good reputation and I'm um, looking forward to reading them. And then the other one I got in the same bookshop in Blickling Hall was um, The Hounds of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So um, confession time, I have never read any Sherlock Holmes, which I'm sure will put, fill some people with horror. Uh, but I... Um, this was in the children's section, so I thought it might be nice when my children are a little bit older that we can read this together, but I'm going to read it first. So, um, yeah, this is one of the full-length stories rather than the um, collections of short stories. Uh, I don't think you have to read them in a particular order. And um, so I am looking forward to reading my first Sherlock Holmes. So next I have a book which I was sent from Facebook on a, um, a giveaway. Um, well, I did pay a couple of pounds for it, but... Um, a giveaway site that I am a member of. Um, this one I've heard lots about on Booktube and I am collecting all the author's work without having read any of them because I'm silly like that. And that is um, Names for the Sea by Sarah Moss. I've heard Lauren from Lauren and the Books and Mercedes from Mercy's Musings talk about this one and um, I'm not sure if someone else as well has mentioned this recently. And so, yeah, I, when I saw it come up, I was like, oh, yes, please. And it's uh, non-fiction. It's about when Sarah Moss and her family moved in 2009 to, um, to Iceland. And it says, um, it's basically talking about the landscape and the language and how it feels to live as a foreigner in another country. I've heard nothing but amazing things about it and about Sarah Moss and this year I really have to read some of her works. It's ridiculous that I'm collecting all of her stuff without reading it. The next one is one that my mother-in-law gave me and that is uh, In the Country of Men by Hisham Matar. This one is nine-year-old Suleiman is just awakening to the wider world beyond the games on the hot pavement outside his home and beyond the loving embrace of his parents. He becomes the man of the house when his father goes away on business, but then he sees his father standing in the market square in a dark pair of glasses. Suddenly the wider world becomes a frightening place whose, where parents lie and questions go unanswered. 
So um, this is set in Tripoli in 1979. So uh, this one, I like reading books that are set in other countries. It's not, it's not a big book and it was shortlisted for the booker in 2006. So the next three I got from the library and all of most of them on recommendation. So the first one I got was one that I've heard Lauren talk about from Lauren and the Books and um, it actually made it onto her book of the year list and that's why it prompted me to get it out from the library and that is Big Bones by Laura Dockrill. So this is a YA book and Bluebell or BB or Big Bones as she is known it says um, she's basically forced to write a food diary and it's about her relationship with food and the, how her food relates to her life and um, it's apparently a lot of um, body confidence is promoted in this novel which is really good and I think that's really important and um, so it's got chapters like Bake or Tart, um, Scones um, cheese toasties, um, pomegranate, they're just the names of some of the chapters and um, I'm really looking forward to reading this after I've had such a glowing recommendation. The next one I got because Jean from um, Jean's Bookish Thoughts, I think that's the name of her channel, I love Jean, um, she talked about this book a lot over the last year and it prompted me to get it out from the library. It's also a YA book. It's a very big book and I think it's part of a series. I'm pretty sure it is. And that is The Diviners by Libra Bray. Um, this is about a girl called Evie who is in New York and she lives with her uncle, I believe. Um, yeah, and he's got an obsession with the occult and she... Um, she has a supernatural power, which I think it's something like when she holds or touches objects, she can tell about the people who owned them. And this is supposed to be um, really gripping, really good. It's quite a big book, um, but I'm really looking forward to, um, to delving in because I've heard Jean talk about it lots of times and recommend it really strongly. And then my final one from the library. Um, I can't remember how I came across this book but maybe someone recommends it to me. It's got a foreword by Ayabami Adebayo which is a really good sign because I loved her book Stay With Me and that is Kindred by Octavia Butler. This one I found it in Waterstones under science fiction but I don't know if it's actually that or if it's more like magical realism. Uh, it's set so it, it sounds like it's got a really interesting premise so it says in 1976 Dana dreams of being a warrior in 1815, she is assumed a slave. When Dana first meets Rufus on a Maryland plantation, he's drowning. She saves his life and it will happen again and again. Neither of them understands his power to summon her whenever his life is threatened, nor the significance of the ties that bind them. And each time Dana saves him, the more aware she is that her own life might be over before it's even begun. So that sounds um, really interesting and I'm really looking forward to it. And I love the cover of this one as well. So the last four I have, one of them is a Secret Santa Christmas present. So I am a member online or on Facebook of the Physician Mums book group and we all decided to do a Secret Santa. So I don't know who this is from, but it's very exciting to receive it. And this is The the Cows by Dawn O'Porter. I heard Dawn interviewed by Emma Gannon on Emma Gannon's podcast, Control Out Delete. And I really liked the sound of this book and I thought Dawn was lovely and so I really wanted to try some of her writing. So it was lovely to get this. This is about three women, Tara, Cam and Stella. And um, it talks about, I think, just their, their lives and how they are different and how they are living in modern society and the pressures put on women. And um, I don't know too much about it, but I just thought it sounded really interesting and I really like things like this. Um, so yeah, we'll see how I get on. It'd be nice to try a new author and I absolutely love the front cover on this. I think it's so striking. Then the final three are ones that I bought. I was really desperate to buy them when I was Christmas shopping and I didn't because they're all hardbacks. And then I got an Amazon voucher and I decided to use it for books. And so I have 
Um, I ordered for one of them, which is Normal People by Sally Rooney, who I couldn't possibly not read after I heard so many people raving about it on their best books of the year. That one is still waiting to be delivered, but the other three have arrived. So the first one is another recommendation from Lauren from Lauren and the Bix. And I think I've seen it on another channel and I really like the sound of it, so I had to buy it. And that is Almost Love by Louise O'Neill. This is a book about um, a lady who has an affair with a guy who apparently treats her really badly, but it turns into quite an obsession. And um, Laura, when Lauren talked about it, she said it rings true of how you can be sometimes when you're younger and you let, well, even older for some people, and you let people treat you badly. And um, it sounds like it's something which was very relatable and also... Um, quite gripping and I'm really really looking forward to this one the penultimate one another one that I have heard so much good things about and I cannot wait to read this it was shortlisted for the booker and that is uh, Washington Black by Essie Adugian um, I really liked her first book Half Blood Blues which I read many moons ago for the readers summer book club and this is about a slave called Washington Black who is a very talented in um in designing a a plane so engineering um i don't know i haven't i haven't read the blurb but i just know about it from hearing lots of other people talking about it and i think he goes on his on travels um as part of his um engineering work and um i cannot wait to read this it looks really really gorgeous and the final final one this one i haven't actually seen once on booktube yet but I'm so excited to read it because the this is a book by the author. If I had to choose one book, which is my favourite fiction book of all time, I would have to choose The Book Thief by Marcus Cizak. And this is Bridge of Clay, which is another book by Marcus Cizak. And um, I cannot wait to read this because I love The Book Thief so much. This one, um, I guess, I know Simon from Savage Reads says when you love a book so much you kind of get a bit nervous about reading the author's next work and I do have that a bit with this just I don't really even know what it's about um let's read and find out so it says in the beginning there was one murderer one mural and one boy but this isn't the beginning it's before it five Dunbar brothers are living fighting loving grieving in the perfect chaos of a house without grown-ups today the father who left them has just walked right back in he has a surprising request. Who will build a bridge with him? It is Clay, a boy tormented by a long buried secret who accepts. But why is Clay so broken and why must he fulfil this extraordinary challenge? Bridge of Clay is about a boy caught in a current, a boy intent on destroying things he has, he has in order to become everything he needs to be. Ahead of him lies a bridge, the vision that will save both his family and himself. It will be a miracle and nothing less. At once an existential riddle and a search for redemption, this tale of five brothers coming of age in a house without rules brims with energy, joy and pathos. Written in Marcus Cusack's distinctive style, it's a tour de force from a master storyteller of the heart. Sounds really good. Um, so that is my massive, enormous, huge haul for January. Um, it's gone on for nearly 20 minutes, so I apologise. So I hope this is a wonderful year for everybody. Lots of New Year's love and I will speak to you soon. Bye.